Hello everybody, my name is Vasco. Welcome to the first video of 2021. Yes, it's 2021. I'm excited, I'm excited. Last year was a lot of fun making YouTube videos and I'm gonna be doing it again this year as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. And thank you to all of you who watch these videos and subscribe, 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 English. I have to learn how to speak again, apparently in 2021. But thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your comments and all the interaction. You know, I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to growing that uh, the community base this year in 2021. And we are going to start this 2021 video campaign with this Momin Monopod review. And just so you know, Momin sent me this Monopod for review. So uh, yeah, now you know, but I'm still gonna give you my honest review of the product. So we're gonna take a look at what's in the box. We're gonna take a look at uh, what makes this product unique. And then we are gonna put it through some real world tests. But, but here's the disclaimer. Everything is kind of closed right now because of the lockdown. So I'm going to do some mock real world tests here in the studio and we're going to test this thing out and see if it can handle the rigors of a professional monopod working for a photographer, videographer, you know, we're going to, we're going to put it on, uh, we're going to put some heavy lenses on it. We're going to put a gimbal on it. Uh, we're going to do some like twists and turns and use it in different situations and we're just going to see what it can do. And if, uh, if it breaks, it breaks, if it can handle it, that's great. But uh, yeah, we're going to test it out and see what happens. Roll the intro. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what's in the box. So first thing you'll notice is on the box, there is almost no information. It just says camera, monopod, and that is it. Now in the box, this is pretty cool. You get uh, you get a nice neoprene case for your monopod, which is really nice. And uh, that's pretty handy. So I like that, that's a cool thing. And inside the case, we have the money maker, the monopod itself. So this is it. This is the uh, the moment monopod and it's got these feet here that pop out so it can stand on its own, which is pretty cool. But any case, that, uh, that is a look at the moment and this is what you get out of the box. Oh, you also get these two little pieces. They're the little attachments that go on the bottom. We're going to look at those in a little detail more. There's a spike and a rubber foot. So depending on the situation that you're, uh, you're using your monopod in, you can use those as well. And just for reference, this is the monopod I've been using for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. This is a Manfrotto 680B monopod, and it's held up really well. I like it, and uh, we're gonna test it out against this. So we're gonna see uh, which one, well, I don't wanna say which one's better, but we're just gonna look at them and compare them. But uh, you can see on the Manfrotto, it's a lot girthier, it's a lot thicker, it feels a lot heavier too. So we're gonna see if this one can support the weight that this one could support. All right, so let's take a closer look at these feet. All right, so let's take a look at the legs on this thing. And this is one of the unique features of this tripod is the legs snap out, which allow it to stand up on its own. And uh, it stands up pretty fine like this with uh, no camera on there and no lens on there, but we're gonna see what kind of lenses we can put on there before it starts to get wobbly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And here you can see there's these uh, quick release pins. You just lift them up and the legs snap back up into the upright position. And there you go, nice and compact, ready for transport. Now let's take a look at these little things that come in the bag. So you have a little rubber foot that you can attach to the bottom of the monopod and you have a little spike as well. So depending on the situation you're shooting in, you can use one or the other. What we're gonna do is remove the legs Now the spike is good if you're sticking your monopod into the sand or into the ground somewhere and you need it to stay in one place. The rubber foot on the other hand is great if you're shooting indoors, if you're doing interior photography and there's hardwood floors and you don't want to scuff up the floor or leave any marks or anything like that, the, uh, the rubber foot is great for that. Okay, now Moment has also given you an adapter here on the top of the monopod, which is pretty cool. And the way you change the adapter is you unscrew this top plate here. It's easier if you actually hold the screw and turn the monopod. And as you can see, the uh, little hand strap here is detachable. So if it does get in your way and you don't want to use it, you can just let it go. For the adapter, this is it here. So this is one screw mount on this side, or thread size, and this is the other thread size on the other side. So to get it out of here, 
just unscrew it from the base and you just flip it around like that. Isn't that pretty cool? And then this would screw back in onto the, uh, the monopod like this. And there you go. So you have different options for uh, screw mounts. I don't know if this makes any difference to anybody, but you can unscrew the top plate of the monopod and you can screw it onto the bottom of the monopod. So if for whatever reason you want to mount something backwards with the smaller screw mount, you can. All right, so now let's look at this little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, tightener, fastener here on the bottom of the monopod. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen it. And what that allows you to do is pivot the feet of the monopod. So for example, if we have it here on the table and we have it loose, we can pivot the monopod hands-free right now. It's holding itself up. And uh, yeah, so if, if you need that kind of thing, if you wanna have your monopod positioned in the same place and you wanna be able to pivot it, you can do that. And if you don't, you can just tighten this back down and it doesn't move at all. Now, in terms of mounting the head on the monopod, it's pretty simple. You just line up the screw threads and twist it on. And because there's uh, two different types of thread mounts on there, you can even use smaller things. You can mount the camera directly to the monopod or you can use like a, a phone adapter and have your phone on the monopod as well. So uh, it gives you uh, quite a bit of versatility. Okay, so if you're new to monopods and tripods, uh, let me give you a little pro tip here. Usually, here's a little Joby Gorilla Pod. Usually all this stuff is detachable. It all comes apart and they all have similar screw mounts. So you can actually take, take them apart and put them back together. So we can put this ball head onto the Moment monopod. And there you go, right? So uh, if you have other equipment lying around, don't be afraid to take it apart and try and uh, yeah, mix and match parts and see what you can come up with. Okay, so one thing I want to point out here is that the spring that snaps these legs into place is exposed to the elements. So uh, just keep that in mind. Perhaps it's not the best idea to take these uh, fold out legs to the beach where water can get onto that spring and rust it or sand can get into the actual mechanism itself and then it becomes tough to use. Maybe the, uh, the pointy bit here would be the better choice for that situation. All right, so here we have the Manfrotto monopod and the Moment monopod, and you can see the Manfrotto is a lot thicker. It's girthier and heavier than the Moment. And the question for me as a professional photographer and videographer is, will the Moment be able to carry the same amount of equipment and, and the same weight as the Manfrotto? So we're going to test that out. And by the way, the Moment uh, doesn't come with any kind of instruction manual, and there's no information on the box for its maximum weight capacity. So uh, we're going to figure that out as we go. All right, now we're gonna move on to the testing portion of this video. And I apologize if you hear an echo, I've chosen to use a bare white wall behind me because the monopod really pops out from the background. But the trade-off is you're gonna hear a bit of echo. So I apologize for the echo, but with that being said, let's, uh, let's get into this. So we have the monopod set up to my height and we're gonna pop a 35 millimeter lens on there with the EOS R and the adapter and will it stand? Hey, hey, look at that. It stands on its own. And that's, I guess that's cool in a way, but I would never, ever, ever leave my camera like this unattended standing on its own at this height because it's just not worth it if it does fall. Okay, so chances are if you're using a monopod, you don't have a 35 millimeter lens on there. You're probably using something heavier like a 70 to 200. Okay, yeah, so that's not gonna stand let's line that up with the front foot so the weight goes in the right direction yeah so that's definitely not gonna hold there but in terms of monopod and being able to use it as a monopod now we're looking at these this monopod right now from a photography perspective I'm gonna run through a couple of things I would do as a photographer and then I'm gonna look at it as a videographer so the one thing I do notice is I don't like these feet when I'm uh, when I'm trying to take shots and move around I feel like yeah, the, the screw head at the bottom is just kind of like undoing as I turn and it just feels loose and wonky. So uh, let me set this up the way I would normally set it up and just take these feet off. Now what I'm gonna do here is replace these feet with this single rubber foot and that'll give me so much more mobility with the monopod. Okay, now with the single foot here, what I do is I have just the up and down access loosened. Everything else on the, uh, the head is tight and then I have the foot. And what that allows me to do is if I'm shooting an event, 
you can sort of you can pivot up and down if you have to shoot higher or lower and if you have to turn you can quickly turn on the single foot when you have the three feet on the ground it becomes really awkward to turn and pivot and i know you can just loosen this and you can twist here but it's just so much easier just to twist at the base and just have this going up and down the head going up and down and then if you have a tripod collar you can easily just turn your camera into vertical horizontal vertical horizontal and uh, you can get a lot of shots. Now, the one thing I will say is this monopod is a lot lighter than my Manfrotto monopod. And that's awesome, that's a huge plus. Because if I'm shooting weddings and uh, I'm shooting speeches and things like that, I'm standing there for a while and then I have to carry the gear and put it in my backpack and the lighter monopod is definitely appreciated. So yeah, when I shoot weddings, I will probably be bringing this monopod with me. But now, let's try this with a heavier lens. All right, so now we got we got the big boy, the 300 millimeter f2.8, and this is one of my favorite lenses when I have to shoot sports or anything like that. Anything where you need some good range and you need a lens that focuses fast and sharp. So uh, yeah, this is it. This is the the heavy one. So let's see this this monopod. There's a little bit of wobble in the monopod, but nothing that I would be worried about. That's fine, no issues. The wobble you see here right now is the head of the uh, the Manfrotto head here is wobbling a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So let's release this vertical motion and release the tripod collar. And yeah, if I were shooting sports, I could definitely get the shots. There's no problem here. If I need to shoot high or low. Yeah, okay. So. The big thing here is that the monopod doesn't restrict my motion, doesn't restrict my movement, doesn't prevent me from getting the shot I need. So that's definitely a plus, that's a pass. Now let's take a look at those feet one more time. All right, so I wanted to take a look at some uses for the feet. And when I have the tri or the monopod compressed to its lowest, I can leave the lens on there and it seems to be stable-ish on there with the uh, with the lens. So what you can do is you can set up the uh, the monopod with a lens. Now, ideally you'd probably use a smaller lens or something like this. And I know you've seen like behind the soccer nets in, uh, in soccer games, there's always cameras set up and they're set up with remote triggers. And if the ball goes into the net, the photographers are always pushing the button on the remote trigger to trigger the camera to get the shot because obviously you can't stand there behind, uh, behind the, the soccer net. So, Let's take a look at how that's done. So the neat feature with this monopod, again, is that the legs do come off. And what you can do is you can take your head and you can take that off of the monopod itself. All right, we have everything disassembled here. And what you can do is you can take your tripod head or monopod head and you can put it directly onto these little feet and you can mount your camera on there and then you can position it however you want and just leave it there to get the shot for you with a remote trigger or whatever you need. So that's pretty cool. Or if you're doing some sort of time lapse with video and you just want a nice low angle shot, that's pretty cool. Because I know with monopods and tripods, you can't get them low enough. So with this, you can get a nice low angle shot with a yeah fairly stable setup. So that's pretty cool. That's a thumbs up. Okay, so let's take a look at another situation where the feet would come in handy. And if you're shooting a fashion show, for example, and you're in the pit, the other photographers, you're sitting or you're standing and you know, the runway's in front of you and the models are coming down the runway and you're shooting, bang, 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 bang. And the models are coming fast and furious down the runway. You know how models walk, right? It's quick, quick, quick. And uh, after a couple hours, you're feeling a little bit of fatigue, right? So you want to be able to put your, your camera down. And the thing without the feet is, your camera is either leaning on you while you kind of stretch out your hands or whatever, or you have your camera on your leg like this with the monopod, but with the monopod sticking out, it becomes a bit of a hazard. People can trip on it. And even like this, it's not too comfortable having the camera leaning on you, but that's what you got to do. Sorry, I might've just blocked the, the sound here because I have my mic right there. So the nice thing with the feet is you can kind of just leave your camera standing. <laughs> And you can kind of stretch your arms, stretch your fingers, get a little bit of, you know, a chill out moment before the models start coming down the runway again, and then you can get back into shooting. So the feet will come in handy for those of you who shoot events and fashion shows and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that's another positive. 
All right, so now let's look at this monopod from a videographer's perspective and uh, look at a few things you can do as a videographer with this thing. So, first thing I wanna note is that if your tripod head is locked in on the horizontal rotation axis, if you turn your monopod to the left, what will happen is you'll actually unscrew the monopod from the feet. And if you keep turning to the left, obviously you know what's gonna happen, everything's just gonna fall apart. And that's, that's the sound of me tightening it there. So always make sure your horizontal axis is nice and loose. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing here, is we're gonna do a pan shot. So what you can do is hold your camera nice and steady and you can just pan around. And you can get a nice panorama of a city. And this takes some practice. Thing. So that's one thing you can do with a monopod that you otherwise couldn't do handheld is a nice pano shot. All right, so here we've taken the uh, the feet off and this is another technique for getting a nice smooth panorama shot. You take the monopod and you kind of put it between your legs and you extend your arms like this and you kind of, you're the center of gravity here or the center of the, the circle and you just kind of twist with the camera and you can get a nice smooth panoramic shot like that as well. So uh, that's another technique you can uh, you can do with this uh, monopod. And of course, the best way to get a nice smooth panoramic shot is with a fluid head. Now this is a fluid head right here. And uh, yeah, so if you want a nice pan smooth shot, you can even kind of lean in forward and backwards and do all sorts of things with a fluid head if you're into video. It's not really that handy for uh, photo, but for video, definitely think about picking up a fluid head. So uh, yeah, there's that. Now let's look at some more things you can do with this monopod. Now, a negative I noticed with this monopod is that whenever you want to take off a tripod head or monopod head, the screw adapter gets caught in here and when you try and unscrew the, the head, everything else comes apart and the adapter stays in here because this threading is not attached to the monopod itself. So it becomes a bit of a, a pain in the butt to switch heads all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. So in this situation, I'm actually gonna have to use the vice grips to get this piece out of the bottom of the uh, the tripod head. But here's a, here's some advice for you. If you're gonna use vice grips to pull out this, uh, this screw mount, be careful you don't squeeze it too hard because you don't want to bend the threads on here. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. So I much prefer the system on the Manfrotto and you can see here that they have the uh, one thread mount hidden behind the other and uh, that makes it super convenient. And uh, the thread mount or the screw is attached to the monopod so you don't have to worry about pulling it out every time you change monopod heads. And for you vloggers out there, can you vlog with it? Yes, yes you can vlog with it. Now, the nice thing about this monopod is it's smaller and more lightweight than other monopods. So when it comes to vlogging, you can uh, you can get some good reach out of it without it fatiguing your arm too much. Like it feels heavy, but it doesn't feel too heavy right now. And of course, if you put a GoPro on there or use your phone or whatever, it's gonna be a lot easier to, uh, to handle. But uh, the lightweight monopod is definitely appreciated. And another thing you can do is, let's see if we can set up this shot here. We can get the, uh, the camera mounted here to my chest and we hold it nice and tight. And then if we start moving around, we can create this effect where it's like the background spinning. Now, if you remember um, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels when the guy loses that card game and he gets all like shocked and stuff. So it's, it's a cool effect if you're filming something. I don't know if you wanna make it look like you're spinning around in space and whatever, but yeah, that's an option you can do with this monopod and it certainly makes it easier because it, uh, it has the feet on there. Sorry if you got a little dizzy. All right, and for my final trick, of this episode. Okay, we gotta tighten this. Now, this is the one thing I don't like about these, I don't know, turn to tighten kind of monopods or even tripods, is that with a clip, it exists in an either on or off position. So it's either closed or it's open and that's it. With these twisty bits, sometimes they're not tight enough and the, everything just kind of slides and I, that's why I'm not a big fan of these. So just make sure they're all tight. All right, here we go. And for the final trick, we have a makeshift jib. So we have the Ronin S gimbal here on the monopod. And uh, what you can do with this is you can create jib shots. This is like a makeshift jib. So there we go, we can get a nice shot. Here, I'll show you guys what you look like inside my camera here. Pan it down, I have all the lights on. So there we go, nice and smooth, up to down. Oh, my hand got a little shaky there. So a trick you can do is sort of like put it into your hip like this 
Then you can kind of lower it and bring it up and you get a nice smooth shot. So uh, you can use this as a, uh, I guess a makeshift jib. I have this extended to two of the, um, I guess the, the extensions of the monopod and you can see here it's kind of getting a little bendy. Now keep in mind the Ronin S is one of the heavier of the portable gimbals. There, there's a lot lighter ones now, but um, yeah, it's, it's starting to bend and I don't want to push it any further than this because this is a lightweight monopod and I don't want to snap it and I don't want to drop the camera or the gimbal. It's not worth it at this point, but um, yeah, just keep that in mind that this monopod is a little smaller and thinner and lighter, which was, which is one of the things that makes it good, but uh, it also is a little bit of a limitation as well. But uh, overall, super happy with everything. Now, let me give you my final thoughts. All right, here we go. And in conclusion, in conclusion, let's look at uh, ease of use, value for money, and who is it for? All right, so ease of use, it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty straightforward. It's a monopod. I personally don't like these twist to lock legs. I, uh, I don't like them on any of my equipment. That's just my personal preference. I prefer clips because clips are either on or off, locked or unlocked, and that's it. Um, I had a few issues with the, uh, I guess the, the adapter here at the top, when you unscrew it to flip it over, it becomes pretty cumbersome. And you saw how it got stuck on my Manfrotto fluid head. I had to use vice grips to take it off. So uh, that kind of takes away a little bit from the ease of use, but for, at this price point, what you're paying for, I think this is great. I mean, the fact that you even have the option to put different heads on there with different thread mounts, that is a good thing. Definitely a good thing. These legs, super easy to use. You know, it makes it versatile, like it stands on its own depending on the weight on there and the height and you can, you know, you can mount it to your chest. It, uh, it comes in handy, like I said, if you're if you're shooting any kind of events or anything like that, it's definitely a good thing. And value for money, I think, I think this is definitely worth the money. I mean, we tested it out with a 300 millimeter f2.8 in a, in, a, in, like, in a situation where you would be shooting, let's say on the sidelines of a soccer game or football game or something like that. And it definitely held up. It held the lens, no problem. The monopod didn't get in my way. That's a huge plus. So value for money, yeah, I think this thing performs as well as the higher end monopods, but the price point makes it so much more affordable. So yeah, awesome to that. The only thing you want to keep in mind is it is a smaller monopod. It's that the girthiness of it is pretty thin. So don't treat it like a heavy duty monopod. Don't put something extremely heavy on there. If you're doing jib shots, don't extend it fully because I feel like it might snap. I don't want to test it. I don't want to push it to that point and drop my equipment. But you know, if you want to see that, you can lend me your equipment and I'll put it on the end of my jib and give it a try. But uh, yeah, value for money, I think is definitely there. Ease of use, great. And uh, who is it for? I think it's for amateurs and professionals alike. Like I said, you saw that 300 2.8 on there and everything worked just fine. So if you're professional and you're shooting the sidelines of sports events, or if you're shooting a wedding, or if you just need a monopod to, you know, take a walk in the park or something, I think this, this will do it for you. And actually, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this at a wedding because it is so lightweight. The one thing I like to do when I shoot weddings is pack as little as possible and be as light and as quick and as nimble as possible. And uh, this will definitely help me do that. So that is it. That is my review of the Moment M65 monopod. I definitely like it and I will be using it. Mm -mm, all right, and this is it. Pow, pow. <laughs> Pow, pow, if you get the reference. All right, so this is the first review video of 2021. Finished, complete, first video in the books. I'm happy about that. That's great. This is gonna be a good year. I can, I'm really motivated to create videos for you. My name is Vasco. If you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell icon so you can get notifications when new videos come out. I'm gonna be focusing on a lot of review videos. I'm gonna do Photoshop tutorials, Premiere Pro tutorials, Lightroom tutorials. We're gonna do some behind the scenes for photo shoots and video shoots and that kind of thing. When this pandemic is finally over and we can start socializing again, I definitely will bring you on behind the scenes stuff. For now, I'm just gonna focus on what I can do in my studio space. But uh, yeah, that being said, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this kind of stuff, if you want to learn how to be a better photographer, videographer, if you want to learn how to use lighting better, uh, definitely subscribe because we're going to have some videos on that kind of stuff coming up. And uh, that is it. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Links down below to the moment stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.